Hey everybody, this is Jay coming in today with a video of the little side project I've been working on in my personal life. Um, I decided out of the blue, just kind of randomly, that, uh, you know what, I wanted to build a computer. <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, obviously I've always had a love for computers, so I always have a, you know, big heart for PC Master Race and all the good stuff that comes with it. Um, I've been slowly working on and building a budget for my own personal build, but um, while I've been doing that, while I've been researching and doing my homework, uh, I ended up getting hit up by a friend of mine, a dear good co-worker named Seth, and he was really interested in what I was going on about, and, you know, all the things I was looking at, and uh, he expressed a lot of interest himself in having a computer. But um, he wasn't sure like where to go or what to do or how to even begin. And uh, so I offered my expertise to him. I said, hey man, you know, I can, I can easily slap something together for you. We can figure this out together. We can tackle it as a team. And who knows, maybe we'll come out with something real nice and real shiny on the other side. Uh, needless to say, I'm very happy with the work that I've ended up doing. And uh, it turned out great. Um, Seth's had the computer now for a couple of weeks. And uh, every day I check in with him, making sure it's good. And he is just blown away. He is completely humbled and grateful for everything that has come from this computer. And it's done him a lot of good in his life. And uh, that just makes me ecstatic as a person. I, you know, I couldn't be happier to know that you know, I was able to put my skills to use and help out a buddy. Um, pretty much what's going on in this video right now is you're seeing me uh, just kind of going through the parts, checking out the manuals, getting everything kind of figured out, you know, what goes where and, you know, how does this slot with that. Uh, it's been well over 10 years since I have had my hands inside of a PC, so this was a major refresher for me, but it was really nice. It was really good to just kind of get my hands dirty and back in the tech world and you know figure out all the different new add-ons and all the additions and all the just crazy stuff they've added to computers over the last 10 years it's it's a completely different ball game from the when I used to play we'll put it that way um, pretty much right now in the video I'm just kind of thumbing through manuals, figuring out, you know, basic things, getting the motherboard all set up here. You can see me slapping the CPU in. Soon I'll get that RAM on, and then I'll get the uh, cooler for the CPU. I end up running into a bit of a problem with that. The RAM was uh, tall enough to actually, like, interfere with the cooler, but uh, I managed to make it work. It, it, it turned out really good in the end there. Um, let me go through the specs real quick here, just so... You guys kind of know what, I mean, you guys can kind of see already what's on the table, but here, I'll just lay it out. So the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X, coming in at 3.8 gigahertz, 6-core processor. Uh, solid, solid entry-level CPU. Um, I mean, anyone who even knows a, anything about computers can tell you that AMD is blowing it out of the water right now. Uh, just in terms of general use, so it was a it was a phenomenal CPU to pick, and uh, I had to go with it. For the motherboard, we've got the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi ATX motherboard. Um, Seth was really really determined to have some Wi-Fi, and uh, you know I discussed the different options with him, but um, at the end of the day, I just kind of figured you know it might be best to just pony up a little extra on that motherboard. And make sure he's just got some solid built-in Wi-Fi. Um, it apparently is working phenomenal for him, which is really good. Uh, worked great at my apartment when I was slapping it all together and getting everything up and running. So yeah, that was that was definitely a really good choice on the motherboard. Uh, with the memory, we've got the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro coming in at 16 gigabytes. They're two 8 gigabyte sticks. Uh, 3200 speed, DDR4 of course. Um, you know, solid, solid, uh, solid memory. Got it for a really good deal too. Uh, memory's dropping in price right now on the market, so it's a uh, it's a good time to think about upgrading that RAM. 
Uh, we also got a Western Digital Blue one terabyte solid state drive NVMe. Um, that's that's a nice, very solid little SSD. Definitely uh, handle gaming, handle like you know fast uploading, fast downloading, writing and reading, all that you know stuff that you really need to kind of get at real fast. It's really good with that. And then uh, to back that up in Seth's build here, we have the Seagate Barracuda 6 terabyte uh, standard uh, hard drive, uh, 540 RPM. So it's not like the fastest, blazingest hard drive on the market, uh, but it was really good, uh, really solid, chonky boy, 6 terabytes. That's that's a good good amount of room to fill up. So uh, he really wanted, he really expressed during you know the initialization of the build that he wanted a lot of storage because he's got a lot of videos and a lot of photos of the family and of you know vacations and memories and all that good stuff so i really wanted to make sure that he was going to have something to s solidly store all that in and then on top of it have room for the future memories that he's going to make <laughs> um we've also got the msi geforce gtx 1660 super with uh, six gigabytes of vram overclock ready um just a solid entry level graphics card i mean I, I had a bit of a toss-up with the with the graphics card right now if you know anything about the market right now with the 3000 series just coming out everything is up in the air so it was that was probably the biggest thing I struggled with was just kind of figuring out where I wanted to go with the graphics he did express a lot of interest in gaming and he was really you know he wanted to be able to play the new titles the big flashy ones AAA studios but he wasn't terribly worried about having ultra super quality so I went with something that I knew could handle the workload but didn't necessarily need to go above and beyond with the workload of today's modern titles so with that he's gonna be good he's gonna be set up and it's gonna take care of the job um, he's also got the Lian Lee Lan Cool 2 mesh edition uh, that's his case. That's what I'm working on right now. Comes with three stock fans. Um, was a pretty good case to build with, actually. I was fairly impressed with the quality of it. Um, there were a few little kind of like odds and ends with the case that I had, but I didn't really feel like too tied down or, you know, too constricted by it. So overall I have to say like I was rather impressed uh, Leon Lee is a solid case manufacturer I definitely recommend them for anybody and then uh, we also got that goofy looking 650 watt 80 plus gold certified fully modular ATX power supply it's got RGB built into it it's kind of quirky it's kind of gimmicky but it's a very solid uh, power supply at the end of the day and it, um, it it let me set up everything really well and kind of keep the cable management issue you know actually rather tidy with its modularity which was really nice it was really good um, overall it was a lot of fun to put together a lot of fun to just kind of smash this bad boy out and get everything looking good and boy in the end um, you know I don't have video footage of it I do have the photos but man, in the end, that computer came out looking really well, and it runs. It runs solid. Um, I didn't do anything like too extreme to it. I didn't overclock it or like <clears throat> set anything too crazy. Probably about the craziest thing I did was I did set up XMPs with the memory, so his memory is going to be running a little faster than usual. But in today's PC world, that's kind of just standard, standard issue stuff. So it should be blazing speeds and. Uh, you know, tearing up whatever it needs to tear up. It was uh, definitely a lot of fun. Um, if I could have done anything different with the build, I probably, hmm, I might have, you know, I might have honestly considered maybe shifting a little less of the budget into the graphics card and maybe more into the CPU, only because of the client's needs. Seth. Uh, Seth was much more interested in doing schoolwork and browsing Netflix and checking out 
you know, the latest and greatest on social media, far more than he is into gaming. So I might not have needed to go so heavy into the graphics card. Um, I didn't really sink a lot of the budget into it. It actually, I feel like the 1660 sits at a really proper place for the budget and everything that was considered at the end of the day. So I am pretty happy with it. Um, what's next for me? I guess, um, well, I got my own build to do. <laughs> I'm still saving money. I'm still working at the gas station, making a whole $12 an hour. But, you know, I figure if I can really buckle down and discipline myself and squeeze out this budget, you know, when I show up with my build and I can say to people, hey, I built this computer <laughs> and I built it making $12 an hour, I mean, you know, what are people going to say against that? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to speak on it anymore, but you know what? I'll let the work prove itself when that happens. Um, I guess some exit thoughts here as we're ra wrapping up the video. You know, you can always build a computer too. Don't, like, ever be intimidated by this, or don't ever think, like, it's completely out of your reach, because it is so not. This was a $1,500 build, and uh, that was actually a very nice budget to work with. It was, uh, we had a lot of stretch room and a lot of areas to just kind of play around with things. And uh, you don't need to go that high, honestly. You really don't. Um, you can go a lot lower. You can. You can get really, you can get rather budget with PCs these days. There's so many options. There's so many variables and different paths that you can take it's it's mind-boggling how big the market is these days diy computer building has just exploded since i have last touched it and that was super exciting to see uh, i would encourage anyone you know who you know this piques the interest of you know get out there man just get your hands dirty just do it just you know, just get into it. Like, don't hold back. Don't hesitate. Don't think. Just do it. That's a, that's, a, that's a redundant thing to say. But you know what? I can't hammer it home enough. Because the truth is, is when you start getting into it and you start just figuring it out, it's just the greatest thing in the world. There's so much to it. There's so many things to learn from it as well and just take away, you know, you, your knowledge and your intellect in this field can only expand. And as computers take over everyone's lives more and more every day, I mean, how is, you know, how is this information hurting you? I don't know. I couldn't see. This is, this is nothing but a net positive in my book. Um, a tip for maybe, you know, others who are interested in this um, would be do your homework, research, uh, figure out, you know, what you want to do, plan and prepare before you take action. But at the same time, take action. Don't fucking wait. Just get out there and fucking do it, man. It's, it's so worth it in the end. And this doesn't just apply to computers. You can apply this to anything. But you know what I mean? It, it was it was a lot of fun to do overall and man it was just can't wait for the next build that's all i can even say at this point all right guys i bored you enough you guys have an awesome day and i'll catch y'all later